Lord be with you. Glad you're here. Everything you need to know is in your bulletin or and or being projected from on the screen. We prepare for worship through the brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our life, our mercy, our might. Amen. Please rise. The Son of Righteousness shall rise with shining beams of healing. Let us gather under the wings of God's mercy. Merciful God, in the stillness of our souls, we listen for your voice to know again that you are God. Quiet our restless hearts with the knowledge that you stand with us in the shadows, keeping watch over your own. Rekindle our faith and light the lamp of hope within our hearts. Then deal with us as seems best to you. For where you lead, we can confidently go with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The good news is that God does indeed care about us. God sent his son to forgive us and most importantly, heal us. As a called and ordained minister of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace by greeting those around you. You may be seated. The first candle that we light, we light to redeem the pain of loss, the loss of relationships, the loss of jobs, the loss of health. We pause to gather up the pain of the past. We offer it to God, asking that from His hands we may receive the gift of peace. Refresh, restore, renew us, O God, and lead us into your future.
the second candle we light to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their name, their face, <coughs> excuse me, their voice, the memory that binds them to us in this season. May God's eternal love surround them. The third candle we light to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember these past weeks and months, the disbelief, the anger, the down times, the poignancy of reminiscing, the hugs and handshakes of family and friends, all those who stood with us. We give thanks for all the support we have known. Let us remember that dawn defeats darkness. The fourth candle, we like to remember our faith and the gift of hope which the Christmas story offer to us. We remember that God who shares our life promise us, promises us a place and time of no more pain and suffering. Let us remember the one who shows the way, who brings the truth, and who bears the light. Lord be with you. And also with you. O Lord our God, you see and know and feel the pain of the world. Teach us the lessons of endings, children and friends leaving, loved ones dying. Help us to lift up our grief, our grudges, our blaming, and our excuses concerning these endings. O God, grant us a sense of your timing. Look up on us when we feel, look upon us when we feel alone and enfold us with your love that in the midst of pain we may know your presence through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You are invited at this time to come forward and light a candle in memory or honor of a loved one or as a sign for healing of some heartache. The ensemble will sing Silent Night.
Let us pray. Gracious God, in this season of short days and long nights, of gray, white, and cold, teach us the lessons of beginnings. Make our beginnings a starting place, a planting of seeds which bring to birth what is ready to be born, something right, just, and different. A new song, a deeper relationship, fuller love, in the fullness of your time. O oh God, grant us the sense of your timing. Amen. first reading this evening comes from the prophet Isaiah. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Sheba in exchange for you. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter. Please rise if you are able. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, how are you dismissing? Now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that he will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul, too. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. (laughs) 
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a story that's told about a old rabbi who lived in a town, and a woman came to him. She had lost her only child, a baby boy, and she was inconsolable. She came to the rabbi, the wise one, and asked him for a miracle, the restoration of her child. And he told her to go to the village and go door, <clears throat> door to door and to bring, bring back a grain of rice from each home that had never known the loss of a loved one. She went into the village and began to knock, hopefully, on every door. She continued knocking door after door and could not find a single home that had not experienced loss. She returned to the wise man, understanding that sooner or later, grief afflicts us all. Simeon was wise enough to let Mary know that grief was going to afflict her also. When they brought Jesus to the temple, when he was eight days old, he expressed great hope for Jesus, but then said to Mary, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. So it seems every household has grief. The Christmas story, we could say the first Christmas was a rather blue Christmas in a sense. It's a story about a teenage pregnant girl with a child that is not her husband's. It is a story of a child born in a dirty animal stall. It is a story of innocent boys being killed by King Herod because Herod feared one of them might be the rival king. It is a story of someone sent into the world in peace who was condemned to death. It is a story of a light sent to shine in the darkness and the world snuffed it out. It is a story of God's never-ending self-giving mercy which was rejected and condemned. So even Jesus' family experienced that grief. The holidays are a difficult time for many people. Here are some people that are having difficult times. Fred would be celebrating his first Christmas without his wife after 35 years of marriage. He is mo missing the most important person in his life. Tom and Sally will spend this Christmas thinking about their son who is in jail serving a prison term. Mary will get to see her children Christmas morning. They will be spending the afternoon with her former husband, their father, and his new wife. John still does not know how to break the news to his wife. She's making plans to buy new living room furniture, and he knows that the company has told him that because of a downturn in their business, he's going to lose his job come the first of the year people with problems, with grief. So what do we do with our grief? And they tell us grief tends to be more acute at the time of holidays because our loved ones may not be with us who we expected and thought would always be there. So uh, can go on the internet and get all kinds of lists of things you're supposed to do. And here's a consolidation of one of those lists. And it's all good advice. 
Spend time with other people. Exercise. Take a holiday vacation. Avoid alcohol. Reduce the sugar in your diet. Stay busy. Give flowers in memory of the person you are missing. Help others. Now that's only eight things that you're supposed to do. Only eight. And you can find lists of many more. The problem is, they're designed to simply keep us busy. And it doesn't keep our mind busy. It's focused on doing. I'm going to only suggest one thing. And it has to do with the color blue. In Scripture, especially the Old Testament, the color blue is important. It's important in particular, for some reason, God has the vestments of the high priest blue. I find that curious. Um, maybe God likes blue. It's my favorite color, so maybe God likes blue too. But the high priest would wear blue almost on every occasion. There's a couple of exceptions to that, but most of the time the high priest wore blue in the Old Testament. And the book of Hebrews now tells us that Jesus has risen to the status of high priest, our high priest. Jesus has risen to the status of high priest forever. So I like to think of Jesus as wearing blue, a blue robe. The prophet Isaiah tells us about Jesus that he died, that when the Christ died, surely he has bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet he did not esteem, we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Jesus bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. The great high priest, wearing blue, I would like to think that our sorrows and our griefs are carried by Jesus. They're on his shoulders. So tonight I really only give you one thing to do, and you really should do it. Give your griefs and your sorrows to Jesus. Let him carry them. Amen.
we continue with the prayers. In the spirit of this season, let us now confidently ask God for all the things we need, that we may be granted the strength to participate in this Christmas season in whatever way we can. We pray to the Lord. That our families and friends may continue to help and support us. We pray to the Lord. That all those who are experiencing loss find comfort in their faith, especially at this time of year, we pray to the Lord. That all those who are experiencing loss find comfort in their faith, especially at this time of year, we pray to the Lord. God of compassion and love, hear the prayers of these, your people, grant to all, especially the bereaved and troubled, the peace proclaimed by the angels at your son's birth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, the beginning and the end our salvation and our hope. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
God of light shine upon you. May he scatter the darkness from your path and may he deliver your life into his amazing grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait in this meal, you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deed and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God did not wait until the world was ready, till nations were at peace. God came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. God did not wait for the perfect time. God came when the need was deep and great. God dined with sinners in all their grime. He turned the water into wine. God did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy, God came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt to a world of anguish and shame. God came in joy, and his light never goes out. God came to a world which did not mesh to heal its ill and to shield its scorn. In the mystery of the Word made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is whole or to raise our songs with joyful voice, to share our grief, to touch our pain. God came in grace with love. Rejoice, rejoice. Please rise and receive this benediction. May Christ, who shines in the darkness, fill us and the world with grace, truth, and light. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit Bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, God is with you.